Right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And yes, the sun is setting behind me. It's sort of just a dark blue out there. I'm trying to get back into shooting the vlogs at night. I always thought it looked cooler, had a little bit different of a vibe. Uh, the beer segment from the last vlog uh, actually looked pretty cool with the exception of people being able to see the refresh rate on my monitor like reflected on me. So I've turned my monitor brightness all the way down. So hopefully there's not going to be any flickering of my refresh rate, but but welcome, welcome, welcome to the vlog. Let me get out, let me get out my vlog notes here. And I'm gonna have a different camera angle for the vlog. I'm gonna put it over on not a huge change, you know, not a not a giant change. We're gonna put the put the camera over here on the left side of the desk rather than over there on the right side of the desk for the uh, for the review videos. I don't know. You know what? We're just mixing it up. But let me get out my vlog notes here. So uh, we do have a lot of stuff to talk about this week. I don't have a lot of first impressions uh, actually don't really have very many first impressions at all but that's fine we'll get there when we get there uh, we do have beer um, we do have some first impressions of course there's gonna be shout outs we do have some pretty interesting stuff to talk about here at the beginning and then uh, I do have a retro vaping segment prepared and of course of course have my final segment uh, favorite comment of the week thrown in there as well and don't forget that my big giveaway for the 200,000 subscribers is still going on it's going to end on the 22nd i'm going to announce it on the 22nd um very very few entries like it started off amazing and then it kind of trailed off a little bit so yeah get your entries in uh go watch the end of the last vlog i mean after the credits it explains everything i'd rather not uh, just sit and explain everything again okay fine i need a video i need a video of you vaping send it to contest at grimgreen.com there's two m's in Grim, it's grimgreen.com, contest at grimgreen.com. I just need a uh, video footage of you vaping and making it look cool because I'm trying to put together a new intro. I got a whole mess of stuff, put together a big old box of stuff that I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be giving it away. We're going to be giving it away on the 22nd. I have a feeling I'll do a cutoff, uh, you know, sometime on the 21st, whenever. If you, if you send them in late, then... You send them in late. I mean, that's not like a hard final date, but sometime on the 21st by like midnight, I guess that's going to be the uh, that's going to be the cutoff date. But anyway, but anyway, moving forward. So I want to start every vlog like this before we get to the beer. And now we're going to do the beer just seamlessly like it's not going to be a separate segment where we go to a different day. It's going to be all inclusive back in the vlog. So my beer is sitting here slowly getting warm. So one thing that I want to cover real quick is what I have been vaping. And there's been a couple things. Uh, I've been hanging in there, hanging in there with this cult mod. This is the cult mod mini. Uh, it's just a dual parallel box. I dig it. I dig it a lot. Been rocking it with the dot mod Petri version 1.5 dual fuse Clapton. Uh, tricker cap from uh, Double Helix Designs and the Donut Pounder Juice. And let me make sure that this is actually nice and juiced up. Um, donut Pounder. I just, whatever. I literally can't get enough of this juice. It's, it's easily one of my favorite juices, possibly of all time. Oh, it's good. Oh my God, it's so good. It is so good. I'm going to save that juice because I have a feeling that that juice might actually go really well with this beer situation I have going on here. Another thing I have going, uh, Hexome version 2.1 or whatever, the newest version of the Hexome, uh, the Phenotype L RDA. Uh, I put a dual fuse Clapton on here and it came out to 0 0.25 ohms, which is high. I mean, it's high. It's high enough to run on the Hexome. Uh, I've been... Trying out uh, Omboy's new juice, the the Dynamite, and so far I like the Ignite the most. I think I like the Ignite from Dynamite the most. Both of these juices, there's two. There's the Fuse and the Ignite, and they're both very very throaty. He is a high nicotine, not high nicotine. He's a six milligram vapor, so ha, relatively speaking, he likes six milligrams of liquid. Am I too high? Okay, well, that's maybe a little bit better. Um, so he likes that that throaty feeling. I'm not a huge fan of that, like, super throaty sensation that you get from some juices. But this, the Ignite from Dynamite Liquids, uh, it's, uh, it's really delicious. It's like, 
they describe it as a strawberry uh, strawberry hibiscus, but it really kind of tastes like strawberry jello. Like there's like this creaminess to it, like not the regular clear jello, but like the creamy jello, you know, like the like the translucent jello that's like milky. Like that strawberry milky jello. I don't know. I don't know. That's just what I get from it. It's been uh, it's been delicious. I have this set to, I believe, 50 watts. Uh, I've just adjusted it to taste because it's the hex ohm and there's no display on it or anything. It's good. It's really, really sweet. It's a really, really sweet vape and it's creamy. It's like a weird strawberry creaminess it reminds me of jello it just the first time i vaped this i thought of jello it actually reminds me a lot of the vape life juice the wisteria that i love i love that wisteria juice that's what it reminds me of good it's good and throaty and then uh lastly i want to give a uh well not lastly shit let's do uh let's do second to lastly because i got another thing i've been vaping this is my original arctic tank just decided to break it out again there's been this whole like version twos of all these tanks coming out there's like the arctic turbo which we're going to talk about a little bit later there's the new versions of the magnus tank there's a new version of the uh the whatever tank there's anyway there's all these new generation of tanks coming out it's like the version two of everything that was out like six months ago yay thanks so i decided everybody's like freaking out over how great these tanks are and i'm like you know what i remember the arctic tank being really really great so Arctic Tank is back out in rotation. It's on the H Cigar VT200. This is a 0.2 ohm coil head, 61 watts. The juice I have in here, pardon me, is from Ronin Vape. Um, if you guys aren't hip to Ronin Vape, their stuff is delicious. This is, I think, the best cereal vape I've ever had. Cereal Killa was my first, and then after that, they all just tasted the same. They all tasted like uh, lemons. It tasted like like Captain Crunch, but with lemons. Like, all of them were really, really lemony, and some of them were borderline, like, lemon pledgy. Like, ugh, kind of like a negative flavor. I just tasted this blind, and I'm sitting here trying to figure out what it is, and it's like... I can't tell if it's a bakery flavor. I feel like there's some sort of berry thing going on here. There's a little bit of citrus. I'm just going to go to the website and look. And so I went to the website, and of course I'm going to link down in the description to basically everything that I talk about. And the Ronin Dojo, it says, uh, Magically delicious blend of everyone's favorite breakfast cereal. Mini marshmallows, sweet milk will rekindle your favorite memories of rainbows, leprechauns, and Saturday morning cartoons. Maybe not the best marketing, but god damn it, this juice is good. And it's so bizarre because when you taste this juice, you can taste like that sweet, sweet milk. And then you can taste the marshmallows and you can taste the like crunchy bits in the cereal. It's just such a well-balanced cereal vape. I haven't had a cereal vape that I've really, really liked in a really, really long time. And it's not for lack of trying. I've tried a fuck ton of cereal vapes. This one, this one has impressed me the most in a while. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's so good. Marshmallows. I get that marshmallow flavor and it's wonderful. But yeah, that's what I've been vaping. Uh, the Arctic Tank is just as good as I remember it. So moving forward, moving forward in the vlog, um... Uh, Beth uh, contacted me and said, hey, Grim Green, this is just a quick little update. Last week, I talked about some UK vendors that were uh, selling our liquids because people kept asking about it. Uh, there's another one. And she said, hello, Grim. We just watched your latest vlog and noticed you didn't mention us <laughs> because we also stock your range here in the UK. Here's a link to our website. We've carried your juice for a year now and we love it. Uh, we would love if we could get a shout out. So don't forget. And I'll link in the description. It's the vapestation.co dot uk they carry uh the epic clouds uh in the uk if you're going there and also um dna screens so there's a group uh on facebook dna 200 themes and i posted a picture one two three four five one okay of uh i don't know you're not gonna be able to see that maybe if i hold it actually in focus anyway it says clutch i've been modifying all my dna 200 screens just with fun cool graphics and i'm like I have just been collecting them and I never thought about like sharing them or anything. So what I'm going to do in the description is link to an imager album of all like the DNA 200 screens that I think people would want. I did like 
the clouds bro clutch the grim army uh grim cult there's a star wars one there's the sub ohms one there's a toot life one there's a couple cool ones in there i left some out like i made some sons of anarchy ones that you know if you're interested in them uh, then just hit me up and I'll email them to you. But otherwise, I'm going to post a link in the description to an Imager album where I've put all of my DNA, uh, where I've put all my DNA 200 screens. Now, I do have a quick, I do have a quick, eh, maybe it's like a slight apology. Last week, I went on a little bit of a rant and I got a little bit worked up and it was really stuck in my craw, some of the things that were said on Reddit. And looking back at that video, I kind of just cringe and I go, man, I don't know why I let that get to me so much. It must have been the day, just the mood I was in, but I saw these comments on Reddit and it really like put me in a foul mood. And then talking about them put me in even more of a foul mood. So I want to apologize to the ECR subreddit. Generally, they are very, very nice and very, very helpful. I did an AMA on there a couple months back, and it was uh, it was great. Everybody was super nice, super cool, asking good questions, interacting, and having a really fun time. And I didn't mean to come across and say that Reddit and ECR are a bunch of you know troll assholes who all need to consume bags of genitalia. I, I was just kind of worked up, so that's my that's my slight apology. Additionally, uh, the first impressions video that I did of the Ego CT, I come across as really upset in that video, and I assure you, I wasn't really upset. I was kind of just bah, like, Meh. I'm just using this, whatever. It is what it is. It's it's kind of just you know when you get towards the end of the vlog, there's like you know you get I don't know antsy or or whatever, and I kind of was I kind of came across in that ego. Ego 1 CT video as kind of just that I was really angry or really pissed off or something and I, I really wasn't I was just you know I was just sitting around I was just trying a new vape and that's you know that's the reaction I probably would have had even if there was no camera going so that's just the reaction that you uh, that's just the reaction that you saw in video I do have uh, one more thing to talk about uh, Jason emailed me and he sent me a link to Fort uh, uh, it's a government website. Let me try to where where did this go? Where did this go? City of Fort Collins. So this is the city of Fort Collins. In where is Fort Collins? Colorado. Fort Collins is in Colorado, right? Ruby Roo. Where's Fort Collins? Fort Fort Collins. Where are you, Fort Collins? Fort Collins, Colorado. Yeah. So Fort Collins, Colorado. Okay, no big deal. Um, does anybody else see this microphone right here? It's gonna be here again and I hope that's okay but I really like the way it sounds and so this microphone is gonna be protruding out uh, gone is that pop filter one and I'm using this one now with the new camera anyway Colorado Fort Collins Colorado uh, this includes vaping and they've expanded their smoking restrictions and this was voted on in February 17th <laughs> that's how long ago and it's going into effect on January 1st, 2016, uh, all parks and trails went into effect on September 1st, but the rest of this is going into effect January 1st, 2016, all city owned or operated facilities and their grounds. So no smoking in any Fort Collins restaurant or bars, no restaurant or bars, no smoking within 20 feet of an outdoor dining area or patio, uh, a bunting, wow, I've never used that word before, but it makes sense. Note outdoor dining areas or patios abunting a public right-of-way sidewalk. No smoking in any places of employment except locations in which the city code expressly permits smoking. No smoking within 20 feet perimeter outside of the entrances, operatable windows, passageways, and ventilation systems of smoke-free areas except for passers-by who do not stop. That's, that's interesting. No smoking in bowling alleys or bingo parlors, which evidently there is a, uh, a booming bingo uh, sort of culture, I guess, in Fort Collins. No smoking in any transports, public transit facilities, benches, and platforms, which, yeah, I mean, that's just don't be a dick. Don't smoke there. Don't vape there. 100% of hotel rooms must be smoke free. Now, this is one of those things that bothers me. They're mandating, the state is mandating that 100% of the smoke, 100% of hotel rooms must be smoke free. So they're not leaving it. I think I, I 
personally think that it should be up to the business establishment to decide whether they are going to allow smoking in some of their rooms and not the rest of the rooms. I think the business should be able to decide that rather than the state mandating it and making it illegal to smoke or vape in any hotel room. Anyway, the use of electronic smoking devices uh, will be prohibited in all places where conventional smoking uh, is not allowed. So you're reading through all this and you're like, all right, there no more smoking anywhere. No more smoking anywhere. The whole city of fucking Fort Collins is no smoking. And at the very end, they go, oh, also the use of electronic cigarette devices will also be prohibited anywhere you can't smoke. So if you work somewhere in Fort Collins where they don't allow smoking and then they don't have like a city designated area for you to smoke in, guess what? You're going all day without smoking. You're going all day without vaping. If you're staying in a hotel in Fort Collins, you will not be allowed to vape inside the hotel or within 20 feet uh, of the entrance or if there's an outdoor dining patio that's an embankment a bunting to a public walkway but uh but yeah smoking is permitted in the following areas you may smoke in private residences except those used for public services you may smoke in retail tobacco stores you may smoke at private functions not open to the public so the Fort Collins, uh, if anybody was thinking about having a vape meet or a vape event in Fort Collins, Colorado, you can just say goodbye. Say, no thanks, but no thanks, Fort Collins. Uh, our event will be open to the public and we will be vaping in there, so we can't have it in your city. And I think that's, I think that's, I think it's ridiculous that they're even lumping uh, smoking and vaping together into the same thing. I think that's, I think that's, uh, I think that's just ridiculous. But there you go. I don't know why I do that. I don't know why I repeat myself like that. But anyway, one more thing before we get to beer. How long are we into the vlog? We're 17 minutes into the vlog. One more thing. One last tiny thing before we get to, before we get to beer. So this is going to be an ongoing sort of topic with the new DNA 200 that are coming out. In fact, huge shout out to Mr. Phil Basardo. He just today uploaded a wonderful part one of the DNA 200 that explains a lot of what's going on with this board and how it works. But a lot of people are wondering about milliamp hour. People are very, very concerned about the milliamp hour of these lipo packs. So the way that I understand it is the DNA 200 needs three lipo packs wired in series to get the full functionality of the board in order to get up to that 200 watts. And so Joe Litt, and I'm going to link to this in the description, Joe Litt, Joe Litt, he makes this. He makes the 44 right here. What is a, he has a frequently asked questions area. He says, what is a watt hour and why are you stating the capacity of the batteries in watt hours? And I'm just going to read this because it's really, really short, but it's really, really great information and actually helped me kind of think about and realize, oh, okay, that is actually making a lot more sense to me because there were all these questions and people were saying on YouTube, oh no, you add them all together and it makes 2,700 mile. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, that doesn't seem right because in series, you're not doubling the, the ma, or are you doubling the, the milliamp hour in when it's wired in series? These lipo packs are single lipo packs wired in series. Anyway, the 44 and all DNA 200 mods need three batteries in series to work. When batteries are wired in series, the capacity in ma is calculated as the capacity of a single cell. So, the 44 has a 2000 milliamp hour battery because the battery is composed of three 2000 milliamp hour cells wired in series. Right. So, it's three 2000 milliamp hour cells wired in series. So, you're not tripling the milliamp hour of the battery. It's still a 2000 milliamp hour battery. Watt hours are a way better way of thinking about battery capacity with multi-cell batteries. One watt hour means a mod could continuously fire at one watt for one hour. Right? One watt hour means that a mod could continuously fire at one watt for one hour, or 10 watts for six minutes, or 100 watts for 36 seconds. For example, a 2,500 milliamp hour 18650 with a 3.7 volt voltage is 9.25 watt hours, which means it could fire 
one watt continuously, just holding down the button nonstop discharge for 9.25 hours, 9.25 watt hours, right? Am I getting this? Does that sound right? A mod with one of those 18650s in it could continuously fire for 9 hours and 15 minutes at one single watt, 55 minutes and 30 seconds at 10 watts, or 5 minutes and 33 seconds at a full 100 watts. The battery in the 44, while it's rated at fewer ma milliamp hour, I know people get mad when I say ma, and I know some people get mad when I say milliamp hour. So I'm going to say milliamp hour because I feel like less people get mad when I say milliamp hour. The battery in the 44 is rated at fewer milliamp hour than that 18650 can continuously fire one watt for 22 hours and 12 minutes, 10 watts for two hours, 13 minutes and 12 seconds, and 100 watts for 13 minutes and 19.2 seconds. Watt hours makes way more sense, especially for vaping. So you can fire 100 watts on the Jolit 44 because it's 2000 milliamp, but it's watt hours, right? So we're converting it to watt hours. So you can fire 100 watts for 13 minutes. And when I first read that, I'm like, wait, 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 Joe, Joe, what are you talking about? 100 watts for 13 minutes, I get at least a couple hours out of this, but then I think, oh, continuously firing. You're not just holding down the button. When you charge this up to 100%, you don't just hold the button down for 13 minutes and 19.2 seconds. You're taking what? Five second long drags? Let's time this. Let's time this drag and I'm going to make sure that's wet. Ready? It's locked. I was counting and it was locked. Did you see that nonsense happening? One, two, three, four. Okay, now we're going to count and we're going to vape. About six seconds. So you get 13 minutes six seconds at a time. Six seconds at a time. Now, could I do some math and figure out exactly how many toots you can get at 100 watts? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try some math here. God, I am so fucking bad at math. What am I doing, what am I doing, what am I doing? Okay, so there's 60 seconds in a minute, right? 60 seconds in a minute? So every nine toots, if you're taking six second toots, drags, draws, whatever you call it, I call it toots, grow up. If you're taking six second toots, you can take nine and it will use one minute, right? Nine, yes. So you can take nine six second toots and that will equal one minute. So you multiply nine times 13 minutes. What? Nope, that's not right. Nine times 13 minutes, 117. <laughs> you can take 117 puffs. I don't know if that's right. Yeah, that's right. Six seconds, you can take nine and it will equal a minute. So nine, 13, 117. You can take 117 toots on the Joe Lit at 100 watts, at a full 100 watts. So if you're only rocking this at 50 watts, then that's half. So it would be 117 plus 117. You can take 234 puffs or toots if you're rocking it at 50 watts. Right now, I'm rocking it at 107 watts and I can take 117 toots, I believe, if my math is correct, which it's probably not. But what I want to do, after all that, that was a long intro. Uh, let's let's go, let's go to the beer section. All right, well, let's drink some beer here, friends. I'm ready to relax, I'm ready to drink some beer. Uh, I have to look this up, actually. Pardon me, I have to look this up because I believe this is a very, very rare beer. Uh, 
very, very rare beer. And my friend Shane, oh no. Yeah, this is a, uh, this is a uh, this is a seriously rare beer, and uh, I may I may have saved it for longer if I had known how rare it was. This is the uh, Bourbon County brand coffee stout. This is from Goose Island, and this is a 2014 bottle, which means it could be up to one year old. I'm gonna drink it. I'm just gonna drink it. Shane, Mr. Shane, uh, he very ran. He's a super super cool guy. Super nice uh, subscriber, longtime subscriber. Super cool. Cool, super cool, nice guy, a fellow beer guy. Uh, I believe I follow him on Instagram, and if I can track down his Instagram, I will post it in the description below. But he is a beer guy, and he posts pictures of beers. And he sent me uh, the uh, KBS, the Kentucky Breakfast Stout, as well as this Bourbon County uh, brand coffee stout. Um, I'm going to be pouring it into a Modern Times uh, tulip glass. Oh, my God, for the first time in the vlog... I may not be pouring over my keyboard. I may be pouring over the microphone. An era has come to an end just now. Do you realize this? Do you realize that I'm no longer going to be pouring over my keyboard if I use this camera angle? Wow. I feel like I should be listening to Boys to Men or something. I don't know. Anyway, weird. Uh, here we go. Let's pour it. I have a feeling it's going to be, oh, just a very, very dark, dark, dark beer. I'm going to give it a super heavy pour because, uh, you know, you know, you got to drink through that head like a man. Super. That is super dark. That is so dark that light cannot escape its surface. Super dark head. This has uh, a very high alcohol, doesn't it? I can smell the alcohol in it. Where's the alcohol? 12.6% alcohol. I could smell it. That's the first thing I smelled was just alcohol in my nose. So this is a coffee stout, and this is rated on Beer Advocate as a 99 and 95, which means eh, basically it's a world-class beer. They have no description on here. I'm gonna try to uh, I'm gonna try to find their actual website and track down like some sort of description on here. Bourbon County brand coffee stout. Every day Goose Island smells intelligentsia's coffee roasting next to the brewery. What? This world cast roaster puts the same craftsmanship into their coffee as Goose Island does with its beer. Each year, this excellent coffee stout is made with a different bean variety chosen in collaboration with our brewers and coffee experts. With the change in coffee comes a change in flavor profile, making each release truly unique from the previous years. The 2015 incarnation features Los Delirios coffees from Nicaragua, which Nicaragua has very highly decent coffees. Um, Available nationwide. Let's see. Uh, okay, so the 2014 coffee, uh, the 2014 release of this, which I have, uh, used Rwanda coffees. Now, coffees from Africa, Kenya, Ethiopia, Rwanda, they tend to be more berry flavored, uh, berry and citrusy flavored, which is interesting. They tend to roast their coffees much lighter. And they tend to have a berry citrus flavor. There was a naturally processed, which this is getting into too much coffee geek stuff. There was a naturally processed Ethiopia Sadamo coffee that uh, had a very, very strong uh, lemon cherry flavor to it. Unbelievable. Completely natural. No, at, no adding in of any flavors. So Rwanda. Hmm. So I'm expecting this coffee to be stouty, obviously. I have a feeling it's going to be heavy and syrupy in my mouth. I have a feeling I'm going to get a strong, strong alcohol as well as a strong, strong coffee flavor as well. So cheers. Here's to you. Thank you, Shane. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like borderline barley wine. Like the alcohol, I can, I can feel it in my jowls. And I always talk about this, but back here, Oh, man, you just feel the beer in your jowls. Let's see what this certain reviewer had to say. A big beer. It is a very big beer. Very thick, full of chocolate, some woodiness, some smokiness, the bourbon and booziness. Uh, knock yourself out. Yes. Deep, uh, rich and deep with intense flavors. I got caramel coconut on the very front. Uh, I had the 2006 bottle. Oh, man. Okay, this is, yeah, I mean, it's going to be different. Yeah, it is it is a big coffee. I, I mean, it's a big beer. I'm going to agree with him there. It's big. It is, it feels, 
uh, substantial in your mouth. It's very thick, very syrupy, a lot of alcohol, man. It feels like you're drinking a barley wine or like even just a wine wine. You do get some upfront like caramely cocoa, but you do get that like strong, intense, very deep, intense coffee flavor. Hmm. Huh. Wow. That is, oh my God, that is ridiculous. I'm going to grab a donut pounder. This one might also be a good pairing. Let's try that. Let's try that one as well. But we're going to try some donut pounder right now because I have a feeling, I have a feeling this donut pounder is going to power well. For a, for a really long time, donut pounder was like my beer juice. I just, if I was drinking beer, I was drink, I was vaping donut pounder. That's just how it was. So we're going to try some donut pounder with this Bourbon County coffee stout from Goose Island. Oh, wow. That is a really good pairing. Oh, my gosh. That is a phenomenal pairing. I just want to do it again. Um, now here, here's a little, uh, secret about donut pounder. It's a, uh, it's a glazed donut flavor. And so it's got like a, uh, a bakery donut flavor to it. But what's in there that some people pick up on is a little bit of, uh, it's like a slight natural cinnamon flavor. Um, and that is really super, uh, it's like a slightly maple, slightly cinnamon flavor. Uh, it's coming out in this beer uh, unbelievably the beer is actually complementing the juice more than the juice is complementing the beer <sighs> the other one the last one the last one i want to try before we move forward is uh milk plus now my good friends over at uh bonsai vapors um john and bonsai vapors just a great crew just a great team and don't forget they do have that uh, advocacy juice which i'm going to post a link to in the description i think about i talked about it like two weeks ago they do have that advocacy juice so i highly encourage you to check that out and while you're over there Ugh. pardon me sorry chic robin stewart sorry apologies all around for that burp while you're over there milk plus it's just it's just a good juice it just never lets me down and i got milk plus for the very first time at VaporCon, first VaporCon in 2014, VaporCon West, and it, it, I didn't like it. I, I got it home, and I was looking at the bottle on my desk, and I was so excited to try it, and it just let me down on every level. And then I went back to it about two months later, and I literally could not get enough of this juice. It's like a, a bakery caramel, sweet caramel flavor. It's unbelievable. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping it'll pair well with this. I don't think it's going to be as good as the Donut Pounder. I still think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, Tactical Warhead Continuous Current Manhattan Version 2. This is a 6-wrap, 3mm, 22-gauge uh, Anarchist wire build. Not bad. Not bad. As a, as a, as a substitution pairing, that is very, very nice. But man... That donut pounder is just freaking delicious with that. With that, that is amazing. The the milk plus really really good as well. Donut pounders really really good. So so yeah, that's beer. Let's talk beer. Let's drink some beer. Thank you so much again, Shane. And now for the rest of the vlog, I can continue <sighs> sipping on my uh, Bourbon County uh, coffee stout. So what we're gonna do now? Oh, we're gonna do some shout outs. All right, so I apologize. I'm going to be looking over here at my screen, and I do have some shout-outs to do. Uh, let's get down here. Let's get down here to the shout-outs. Um, got a guy. Got a guy. Got a poor guy. I, I've known this guy. Whoops. Uh, undo. I've known this guy for a while. I talked to him very randomly on Facebook, and he's got a GoFundMe out there. And uh, he's always been a really, really cool guy. His name's Daniel. And... I'm just going to read this real quick off of the GoFundMe site. Hey, everyone. Uh, a few days after my birthday, I was involved in a devastating motorcycle accident, and I have been crippled ever since. I haven't been able to work, and now I'm losing my place to live. Uh, I can't barely walk, and I need to move across country. My younger brother offered to take me in and help me with what he can by giving me a place to live and putting me on his medical insurance. Um, 
I have to be out of my place by the end of this month and moving from Las Vegas to Ohio with a broken leg is going to be very, very difficult. I just need to cover some of my medical expenses and moving expenses and some money to keep me afloat until I can make a recovery. Any donation will be greatly appreciated and once I'm able to work, I will be paying it forward by donating back on this website. I just need my life back. I lost my life in 2016 when my mother was killed and tried so hard to get it back. Now my ability to walk has been taken away and I just need some help to get my life back in order. Thank you so much for your consideration. Um, like I said, he, this, he's always been, Daniel's always been very, very cool. I message with him very, very randomly on Facebook, but it just breaks my heart. He was in a motorcycle accident. He can't walk. His brother's offering to take him in. If you want to go over and donate, again, I'm not, I try not to do this too often where I say, hey, go give money to them. Go give money to them. You're not my personal army, and I don't expect you to just jump in and, and help Daniel out. But if you want to, literally anything would help. A buck, two bucks, five bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever you want to give uh, to Daniel, I think that would be very, very cool. I think it would. I think it would put a smile on his face. I, I think it would really help him out a lot, really lift his spirits. Um, so I'm going to post a link in the description to Daniel's uh, to Daniel's GoFundMe campaign. But Daniel, you are shouted out. I hope that uh, hope that was helpful. I do have one shout out to do, and this is a uh, well, this is a I'm not going to read this whole thing. This is a slightly depressing email, but a fella named Sebastian, and then he spelled his last name and said, "Don't worry, don't even try to pronounce it." Um, He's been going through some stuff, man, and it's very, very personal, this email is, and I don't want to put all of his stuff out there. Uh, he was a smoker for a very, very long time. He was a pack-a-day smoker at the age of 14. He went on to become a vapor, which is, I mean, obviously very, very fantastic. He was originally from Japan, uh, originally from Germany, moved to Japan, and he's been through some pretty intense stuff. He's got two boys that he just loves beyond repair. And I need to give him a shout out. I can't tell you the reasons why, but he definitely, definitely needs a shout out for himself and his boys. Additionally, he is he ends this email and says, if you could give a shout out to all of my friends here in Japan who try to get me through this hard time, it would be awesome. Especially a big shout out to Toko-chan. She did an awesome job in finding me a good lawyer and translating anything I needed for me. Thank you for listening. And I emailed him back and I said, that is, is truly horrible. And I sent him an email back and I, don't, I said, I don't even know what to say. And he said, thank you so much for your kind words. Watching your videos has always cheered me up and let me relax at least for an hour and a half every week. So absolutely, Sebastian, consider yourself shouted out. Keep your chin up. Hang in there. Things do get better. Um, you and your boys are shouted out. Congratulations on getting away from tobacco. And definitely a shout out to Toko Chan, who did an awesome job of finding you a good lawyer and being your translator as a German in Japan. I can't even imagine the sort of uh, language barrier that you're going through there. But uh, best of luck to you and your boys. It's just, I wish I could share more. I don't feel comfortable kind of disclosing this whole story. Um, it really affected me uh, as I was reading it in a sort of a really, really weird way. It kind of caught me off guard, but absolutely consider yourself, uh, consider yourself shouted out there, Sebastian. Good luck to you, sir. Um, I have another interesting, very interesting story from James. I want to give James a shout out. He emails me and says, Hey, Nick, I wanted to bring awareness to the community for whoever uh, may have this mod from Mad Vapes. Now, his views don't necessarily represent my views. He goes on to trash talk and bad mouth mad vapes just into the ground. I've never had any really huge problems with mad vapes. He has. My wife purchased a mod at Vape Mania this last year. Less than a month after happening it, the board failed in it, and it's a DNA chip. We sent it back to them to have it fixed, uh, being that it does have a lifetime warranty. My wife picked it up from repairs on Wednesday. October 7th. This morning on Friday, October 9th, our puppy woke up because our couch was on fire. The mod had about a 30% battery life when she left it on the couch the night before. She didn't have it charging and she had the fire button locked. We woke up and our couch was on fire. I'm going to show you a picture. Their couch was literally 
on fire. It looks, well, it looks like it was on fire for a really long time. Luckily, our dog woke us up in time to put it out before it spread and burned our house down. Please share this and bring this Bring awareness to this. The manufacturer of this mod is the same people that made that piece of shit DV8 DNA 40 mod. I would very strongly advise people not to purchase these mods made from Mad Vapes. You can share the pics on your video if you want. Sorry, this is so long. No worries at all, James Jones. So it wasn't the uh, it wasn't the DV8. This was a DNA 200 that Mad Vapes is selling, and he sent me a picture of the mod. I don't recognize the mod. He's got the Addy 3 on there. I don't recognize that mod at all. If you know what mod that is, uh, let me know in the comments below. Let me know if you have had any experiences with it or close calls with it. Evidently, this was left not charging on his couch in the locked position, somehow vented and caught fire. The only thing I can think of is if it was loose lipos that got punctured somehow i mean that's such a long shot but i don't know so yes shout out to you james jones glad you're safe uh, i did actually meet him at uh i met him at vape mania this uh this last year super good guy super good guy we got some more shout outs i do have one more birthday shout out to do raven writes to me and says hey nick my name is Raven. I'm hoping you can give my boyfriend, Jake, a shout-out for his birthday. His birthday is Saturday, October 10th. He will be turning 19. He smoked for about a year and a half and cut it out when... Cut it... Uh, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Let me get something to drink before I continue talking and just ruin my horse voice. Mm. He will be turning 19. He smoked for about a year and a half and found out about vaping when he turned 18. He's been watching your videos for almost a year, and every day after he comes home from work, he grabs his vape setup and starts watching every video you have ever uploaded. I just want to see if his most favorite YouTuber could give him a shout out, and I know you get a lot of requests, but if you could please fit this one in for him, we would be very, very thankful. Thank you for your time. Please respond if possible. Uh, and sorry for so many emails. Our computer doesn't show it when the email was sent. Yeah, she sent me like 16 emails. Um, Raven, absolutely. You know what? You're shouted out as well. And of course, Jake, you are shouted out as well. I wish that I had discovered vaping when I was 19 years old, but no, I was uh, I was smoking cool blue boxes when I was 19 years old, and I continued to do that until I was much, oh, so much older. But anyway, Raven, Jake, you are both uh, you are both shouted out. How are we doing on time? We're not doing uh, we're not doing too bad on here. We're not doing too bad on here. Let me do uh, let me let me jump in one last quick shot. You know what? No. You know what? No. We've talked about a lot already. We did beer. We did shout outs. I don't want... Here's the thing, everybody. People ask for long vlogs, but I don't like doing long vlogs. They just end up that way. And I think subliminally people have gotten to me and they're like, make a longer vlog. Go ahead. Make it longer. Make it so much longer. Make it two hours. Make it two and a half hours. No. I say to you, no. This vlog will probably be like an hour and 20 minutes long, and even that is kind of a long time. Although, I get it. I get watching a vape video for that long. I finally understand it, because today I watched that Phil Basardo video on the DNA 200, which was an hour and five minutes just went by. I was glued to the screen, listening to everything he was saying about that video. And he did say toot in that video. So go over to his video and give him a hard time about saying toot, because I say toot. That's my thing. He can't s steal it from me, Phil, you thief. What we're going to do now, what we're going to do now is uh, some first impressions. So this shouldn't actually be a very long first impressions. I have one first impressions that I'm going to do that's an actual, actual first impressions. It's still in the box. And I'm going to do this one first. So this is the new tank. This is the new Arctic Turbo Tank from Horizon Tech. So the Arctic, as I was vaping before, in fact, I just took it off of here in order to in order to use this device for the arctic turbo is a great tank the original arctic is just a wonderful tank the airflow is nice the flavor is great the vapor is nice and warm at least at a 0.23 ohm coil at 61 watts it's good oh it's just good it's a good tank and i'm not a huge tank guy 
but it's a good tank. In the realm of tanks, I feel like the original Arctic still stands the test of time. It's one of my favorite tanks. So then this comes out, and it's the Horizon Tech Arctic Turbo Tank. And as soon as I saw Turbo, I went, oh, man, they probably put a fan in it. Yeah, they totally put a fan in it. I was talking to Matt Cully about this. Matt from Suck My Mod. Uh, I know that people hate that we're friends, but I was talking to Matt about this, and he's like, yeah, there's a fan in it. I don't like it. I don't like using it, this, that, and the other. So this is it. This is the tank. There's a top airflow and a bottom airflow. Okay? There's four along the bottom, very rem reminiscent of that old Arctic tank. But then there's two airflow slots, or there's one. Okay, there's one airflow slot up here. I bet that's for the fan. Oh, I can hear it. That is a uh, that is a fan in there, boy. Let me tell you. Let me take this apart. How far apart can you take this? Okay, so the tank comes all the way out. Awesome. I like it when a tank comes all the way out. Does this base screw off of here? I appear to just be turning the... Uh, oh, no. The base comes out. Okay. That's really bizarre. What is going on here? What? What the hell? What? Okay, so I'm going to try to explain this to you. And it's weird. How do these... Oh, they just pop out from the bottom. So in the base, the base comes apart where the airflow is. Okay, and I know this isn't an ideal camera angle for this. But there's a base with the airflow slots cut into it. And then there's this disc. Do you see this disc with three holes? It looks like a revolver chamber or something. It's got two O-rings on there. And then there's three separate coil heads, each with their own juice flow and each with their own airflow. Okay? Three separate little coil heads. Whoops, these are tiny. Whoops, even more. These are tiny. These are tiny little coil heads. They go into this base. So you load them up like bullets in a revolver. There's three of them. So there's three separate coil heads in there. And then that seats into here, kind of. That seats into the chimney area, and then you screw the bottom on. How the hell do you fill this thing? Seriously. I don't understand how you fill this. Where are the directions? Give me directions. Okay. Okay. Drip tip, heat sink, turbo. That's what they call the fan. They've called the turbo. Air intake hole, tube body, coil adjust, air unit. Oh, okay. So this, this is not meant to get seated in there. It's meant to get seated in the base. So you take this revolvery part with the three coil heads in there and you press it into the base. Good. Good. Let's press it into the base. What juice am I going to put in here? All right, I got a big old bottle of this FAQ Pink Nova. Um, Danielle from notblowingsmoke.org gave this to me, and it's, it's a nicely, deliciously sweet juice. So then you put... Uh, how, does this top part come apart? Does this top part come apart? It says it does. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. There's the fan. That is absolutely ridiculous. I can't believe they did that. Can't believe they put a fan in there. But what are you going to do? Okay, why does that even come apart? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't understand why that comes apart. So you can take this top part off and expose the fan a little bit, or you can screw it back on and then not expose the fan at all. Okay, so I'm going to put this tank back on here. And then I'm going to screw this little housing where the negative of those three posts are. That goes on here. I'm going to screw this together, kind of like the old Arctic tank. The old Arctic tank was constructed very similarly. Okay, so we have that. Um, now, this is going to be tricky to fill up with a glass dripper bottle, but... <sighs> I'm going to do my best. That fan in there is annoying. 
obnoxiously annoying. All right, I'm gonna try to fill this up here really fast. Three and a half, three and a half mil capacity. There you go. Three and a half mil capacity. I'm reading this off the box. Uh, pioneered sex tuplet coil, three piece interchangeable dual coils. Top turbo cooling system, wattage range 1 to 40 to 120 watts, top adjustable airflow, 100% stainless steel tank, 3.5 mil capacity, rebuildable dual coil option. Huh. I don't see an RBA base in here. So what I see in here is a spare tank, a plastic bag with extra O-rings in it. That's nice, Horizon Tech. Then they have three spare coils and then they have what's called the coil model so if you want to use now these are just blanks with no juice flow holes cut into them so that if you just want to use one coil head or two coil heads you would put this in place of a coil head and it'll block off that 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 juice flow and that airflow weird weird this is a really Really wacky design here, Horizon Tech. Really wacky. So what I'm going to do is put like a drop or two in each one of these three little coil heads. Man, this is weird. This is just weird. Okay. Those have juice in them. So then I'm going to take this. And you line the you line it up. Screw it all together. Okay. I feel like uh, I feel like that's together. So what I'm gonna do is close off the airflow and just take a couple of dry toots, dry puffs, dry drags, whatever you want, to just kind of suck the juice up into those coil heads so that they're not completely dry. You can see little bubbles. Oh, yeah, look at that. There's little bubbles coming out all over the place. So here's what's weird about this. Um, in previous tanks, if you got a coil and you loaded it up and it was bucket, it was dry or it wasn't wicking right, you just take that coil out and throw it away. In this, if you taste a burning or dryness, it could be one of those three coils. And you kind of have to guess, like, well, two of them could be good and one of them could be bad or two of them could be bad and one of them could be good, but I don't know which is which. You know, you're going to replace one or you're going to replace two or you're going to replace three at a time. I think the idea is they want you to replace three at a time. Now, this airflow on here just spins very, very freely, which I don't like. I like it when my adjustable airflow can kind of snap into a, a position or a place, if you will. So I'm going to open up the fan all the way. <laughs> I'm going to open up the airflow all the way. I'm going to hook it up to this device. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to vape it. Keep in mind, this is my absolute first experience with the Horizon Tech Arctic Turbo. I've heard some... Uh, some very, very negative things, but it is a 0.2 ohm coil. I'm going to crank the wattage way down to start off with. That's what I do with all my tanks. Whenever I fill them up, I just turn the wattage way, way down so that if it's dry, it's not dry at 60 watts. It's dry at 14.8 watts. Okay, I, I hear vapors happening. Nothing. Nothing's happening. All right. It's time to turn this up. It's time to turn this bastard up because I think they're I think they're wick. Let's turn it up 22 watts. Flavor is really, really bad. 25, 26, 60 watts. I'm going to put it at 62 watts. Please don't be burnt. I'm just going to take a couple more dry drags. I primed the coils. I'm taking plenty of dry drags, but man, you know the fear is real when you are first trying out a tank. It's just, oh, it's it's so nerve-wracking that first hit. You don't want it to be dry. You really just don't want it to be dry. 
Okay. What I also like to do is drag and then press the button and let go and drag and press the button and let go. The heat will actually draw the juice in better. So once you start vaping it, that's why when you start vaping it and vaping it, the juice flows better and better because that heat's actually pulling the juice into where it needs to go. You can hear it. There's a loud tank and there's a freaking fan in it. Well, the flavor is really bad. The vape is really, really cool. Not cool like a a a a. Not cool like that, but cool like temperature. Like it's a cold vape because that fan is it's cooling it down. The flavor is terrible. I mean, the flavor is straight up awful on this. Uh, straight up awful. I vaped this much of the Pink Nova and a 30 mil before it, and I know what this juice tastes like. It's supposed to be sweet, like a sweet strawberry starburst in your mouth. And that flavor is just horrific. I'm going to turn this up. What does it say? It says operating wattage is like... Oh, 40 to 120 watts. Let's turn it up to 66 watts. Why not? Six more watts. Let's get some more power into this thing. The performance is really good. The flavor is really, really bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the airflow on the top. Maybe that will help things. Maybe that will help the flavor department. Worlds better worlds better all three coil heads appear to be working just fine turn off the fan it feels like an old original arctic tank and the flavor is much oh so much better so much better still not great still not like amazing still not like super super good but it's okay. It's not terrible. With that fan open, it's just terrible. I can't believe I'm opening the fan again. Why am I opening the fan again? The vape is so much cooler. So much cooler. Again, not cool like a cool, but cool like temperature, temperature cool. It's, it's bizarre. It's so bizarre because you turn this off and you get a warm vape. Warm, warmth vape. Open that fan up and the temperature of your vape just goes, bleh, it just drops. Silly. All right. Well, there you go, Arctic turbo from horizon tech i don't hate you i was expecting to hate you my uh, my notion going into this was that i would hate this it's wonky it's got three separate coil heads where something could go wrong in each one of those coil heads each something could go wrong in each one of those coil heads and you wouldn't know which one is bad you would have to replace all of them which is a waste of coil heads the fan is dumb i'm going to leave the fan off and just vape it like an arctic tank so much better holy crap that's so much better the airflow shockingly nice other than it's a slightly loud tank is it any louder than the original arctic though seems to be a lower decibel <laughs> than the uh not like a lower decibel what am i trying to say a lower tone like the old arctic tank is like ah, and this arctic tank is like uh, it's a little bit lower, lower on the scale, more in a more in a bass clef scale there. The drip tip gets warm, the tank gets very, very warm. But if you turn on that fan, it's so bizarre. All the temperatures go down, the tank cools off, the vapor cools off, and it doesn't disperse it. One of the reasons that I really hated that turbo RDA was even if you close the airflow down a lot, 
it would still spin and it would make your vapor less dense. It felt choppy, like the vapor felt choppy. It didn't feel as dense, but with this, it does actually feel pretty dense. It doesn't feel like it's chopping up the vapor. It's actually more of an effort to draw and get that spin fan spinning than it is to just turn the fan off and not deal with it. This tank is warm. This tank is warm. Now, Horizon Tech is also the makers of that Phantom tank, which even though it's a really wonky tank, I do actually really, really like. I'm going to revisit that tank soon and put it in the reviews for things that never got reviews because it was a thing that never got reviewed. Um, and this tank is leaking, which... Uh, is bumming me out quite a bit actually leaks from the top so the next thing on the first impressions from sense we're going to be talking about the cyclone tank and i put a picture of this up on instagram and i was like wow this is working actually surprisingly good has anybody else had any experience with this the the comments were really really mixed people were going oh i really really like it and then other people were saying oh i really really hate it and i apologize my face is white because of the iphone right now but i screen captured a comment i believe from the arctic uh from the cyclone tank rather um cj zodiac juice commented and said man my coils tasted of asshole not very clean taste for me i'm not sure if it was just one of the ones I had, but I went through four of them looking for a good taste. Even tried breaking them in, and it seemed to add to the harshness of my vape. So far, the Hercules has still been my f has still been flawless for me. That tank is tough to beat. Um, my experience so far. Now I've had this for 24 hours now. The Sense Cyclone. It has two tank chambers, so even if your top tank chamber is empty, you still have this whole other tank chamber down here. What's the ohm on this? 0.63. I'm going to turn the wattage down just a touch to around 60 watts, and we're going to vape it, and I think it's going to be pretty good. So I had really good luck with this tank. Talking to other people... There's really, really mixed reviews. It's like the TFV4. Some people love it. Some people hate it. I hated the TFV4. I actually kind of like this tank. I do like the airflow, and I'm actually getting nice flavor from this if you close off the top airflow. So there's an extra ring here, which I never enjoy. So I always turn it off. I get much better vapor, much better flavor. It's nice. Um, the juice I have in here is Yig from, you know, whatever, my Grim Cult line. I vaped gallons of this juice, so I'm very, very familiar with the flavor of it. And it tastes like Yig to me. I mean, it's not over-the-top amazingly stellar juice, uh, you know, flavor that I'm getting from this, but it tastes like Yig. If you lay this tank down on its side, it leaks, which is a huge bummer. Huge, huge bummer. Uh, I laid it down on its side on my desk here for what? Couldn't have been 15 minutes, and it just leaked. And occasionally, around this airflow ring on the top, I'll also see little droplets of leaky juice like I see right now. And I'm thinking, how does that get there? So this Cyclone tank has an interesting filling method and I'm gonna fill it up. So right now it's set to vapor mode. There's a little man face here with little vapors coming out of his mouth and that's how you know it's on vapor mode. So you press the button and it'll vape. Oh whoops, hang on. Let me take this, my dad. Hello. Yeah, that was uh, that was my dad. I just had a long, 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 really long phone call with my dad. Uh, Anyway, I don't get to talk to my dad that often, so it was really, really good to talk to him. He's the photographer, and he was inquiring about my fancy camera. He's like, that looks like a really nice camera. And I said, oh, yeah, it is. Anyway, uh, what the F was I even talking about? Cyclone tank. Cyclone tank. Uh, don't remember exactly where I was. Leaking juice out the top. I'm actually getting a really good vape. Oh, yeah, there's a guy on here who's vaping, and that's the vaping position. And then you twist the whole tank. Not on, don't twist the base, you just twist the whole tank over, and now it's on the droplet position. So that's when you fill it up. So you, you hold it over into this filling position, you hold the tank, and then you unscrew the top, right? 
unscrew the whole top like this. And what you're gonna see when you look down in here is fins. Can you see? Can you, I'm gonna try to focus even though this is a really bad idea. Do You see those fins in there? That's interesting, right? There's little fins that are supposed to like, you know, prevent, uh, prevent spit back from happening. And yeah, does it work? I haven't really got much spit back, but I don't know if it's because of those fins or if it's because of the coil heads, but you take your little juice bottle and you just crank it. And there's that bottom chamber that was evidently already very full. And then you keep filling it and you fill up this top chamber just enough to, you know, to fill it up. You know how to fill up a tank. What am I, the tank filling police? You know how to fill up a tank. So then you hold the tank again, you screw this down. If you can find the threads, which is sometimes wonky, screw this down all the way, and then you twist it back to vapey mode. And when you're twisting it from vaping to filling mode, you're closing off those juice flow channels so that your first toot isn't like syrupy, gurgly mess. It's good, man. Uh, I have really only had a good experience with this tank. Apart from the leaking that seems to be happening from this airflow uh, adjustment on top, I get very like random speckles of juice like it's happening right now as I turn it. And I don't know what that is, but I like the airflow on it. I like the quality of the vape I'm getting from it. Mine has good flavor. It just has good good flavor that I can taste. It's yig, and I can taste the yig juice in this tank. I don't get any spit back. I honestly noticed, I honestly noticed that time that I didn't get any spit back. And what I do to test that is I put my tongue over, oh, this whole thing kind of feels wobbly now, is I put my tongue over the airflow from the drip tip. Let me try to get this juice out of these little fin, fin areas. Maybe that's why it's leaking. I'm not really sure. I just get weird little random speckles of juice. I mean, and it keeps, it kind of keeps coming out. I don't know. Obviously, yeah, I need to spend way more time with this tank before I talk about it in a full video. What I'm gonna do again, like I was talking about before is I'm just gonna do a video with like six sub-ohm tanks. I'm gonna do the Cyclone, the Arctic Turbo, the Phantom, the uh, Crown, and the <coughs> Triforce from CCI. I'm gonna put all those tanks. I have a plan for how I'm gonna build this thing to measure them and how it's great. I have a whole plan. I have a whole plan of how I'm gonna do that, but yeah. Cyclone tank, so far it's been really good. Um, the few times that it has got gurgly on me, I flipped this over to fill mode cut the juice flow off and just vaped the remaining juice out of there and then flipped it back to vaping mode and opened up that juice flow and it's been fine like the leaking's been very minimal but it's a good quality vape i'm gonna i'm gonna be done talking about that because i have one more first impression to do before before we get to retro vaping but last first impression that i'm gonna do and this is something that is not going to get a review because it's been out for a while where did it go where's my mod um, it's been out for a while and I'm just not, I'm going to use it when I drive. So I'm driving to Arizona for Vapor Dynasty Expo and I'm going to use this. I'm going to screw this and get it where I need it. I'm going to clip this, poke this, you know, poke this. Good Lord. Suction cup this to my windshield. This is the Easy Dripper and Ruby Roo already did a great video for the Easy Dripper in her car and she sent me an easy dripper. Thank you, Ruby Roo. Oh, because friendship. She sent me an easy dripper. She's like, I got two. Do you want one? And I wasn't quite sure what to think of it. I was like, yeah, you know, I want to try one. So it fits in here really snug. The bottle of juice fits in the housing really, really snug. You have to really want it. You got to push it in there. Thankfully, and then you take this top off and then you have a little dripper spout right there and you take your little dripper spout and you just press it against your drip tip and you go squonk and that's it and there's no drips coming out at all 
and now this is juiced. It lets out a bunch of juice at a time. Let me get my trash can, and I'm gonna do a squonk, and I'm gonna see if you can see how much actual juice comes out. Ready? Squonk. Oh, it's a lot. It's a bunch of juice. Squonk. It's a bunch of juice. A bunch of juice comes out. And when you're done, it doesn't leak. Like, there's no residual here, and it doesn't, like, drip down or anything like that. And my coils, yeah, super nice and wet. And they were, you know, quite dry before. For those wondering, this is the hater box uh, from Hater Mods. Got the Grim Army. It's just one of my favorite parallel boxes. I really, really like it, especially with the golden uh, setup, the golden dot mod, and the golden drip tip. Now, this does come out of here. So it's got this cap that you press on it, and it does come out of there. And so I first put this in here. I'm like, how the shit are you going to get this out of here? But there's a little thumb part right here. You can press the bottle you can press the bottle out a little bit and once it's out you can actually grab the bottle and open it and pull it out the rest of the way and then to fill it up you take the cap off you take this off and you just have a what looks like almost like a cosmetic bottle you screw this all together it's an ingenious little design in fact even if this wasn't something that you attach to your windshield, I would like to carry around my juice in this. I just would. It's nicer than a unicorn bottle. You just, you have your mod, you can do it. So here's, let me demonstrate how simple this is to use. Here's my setup currently, mech mod, unicorn bottle. This is kind of the go-to thing that everybody uses that I use. So if I have my unicorn bottle and a mech mod, I go, I want a drip. So I take my dripper, or I take my juice bottle, and I put it in this hand. Then I have my mech mod in this hand, and then I use this hand to unscrew it. You flip it upside down. You do a couple of drips. Screw it back together like this, and now you're ready to vape. With this bottle, this is just a great bottle to dispense juice. You basically do the same thing. You put this bottle in this hand, you take off the cap, and you just go bleh, and that's it. You're, you're already dripped. It's already full. It's let juice into your atomizer, and now you can vape it. Like I said, this is not going to get a full, full review. Most of all, what I like about this is it's just a tank. I mean, it's just a clear tube. There's no, uh, like, feeder tube down in there. It just it just looks cool, and it's so quick to just go boop and then pop this back together, throw this in your pocket again. It's awesome. I really, really, really like using this. It's really fun. And like I said, even if you didn't attach it to your windshield, this is just a great bottle. I would buy these bottles in place of unicorn bottles every time because they're easier to fill. You can unscrew this and you have a big mouth right there to fill your juice up with. And they're easier to use than unicorn bottles. There's no unscrew the cap, then drip, then screw the cap in. You just pull it off, plunk it, and then smack it back in there. It's great. This is a great bottle. I want to put all my juice in these bottles. I want like 50 of these bottles. In fact, I want like 50 of these bottles and I want like the top to be made of dry erase or something so that you could just write like, this is mango sticky rice from Craft Vapory on here. And so you know what's in each bottle. It's cool, man. It's very, very cool. So me and Yacht Life, Omboy OC, are driving to Arizona. Uh, we're getting a, a rental car, and I am going to snap this to my, uh, oh, look at that. That is quite secure there on the old iPhone glass. Look at that. That is super secure. This thing doesn't weigh anything. It doesn't weigh anything. It's super, super light. And it's got this, wow, that is actually on there really strong. I don't know how this would do. Obviously, don't leave, like, if you park in a parking lot and just take the juice bottle with you don't leave the juice bottle hanging in your windshield 
in the hot sun of California or in the hot sun of Texas or in the hot sun of Elizabethan, Tennessee. Just don't do it. Take it out with you. I just like these bottles. And I'm going to see how it works. I'm going to see how it works in the car. We're road tripping out to Arizona for Vapor Dynasty Expo, and I'm stoked. I'm going to plunk this onto the... Uh, <laughs> stoked. I'm going to plunk this onto the windshield, and I'm going to use it. And, I, and I'm stoked. I'm stoked for it. I really, really like this bottle. And like I said, even if it didn't come with this and it was just this bottle, done. Sold. I, I am sold. I am sold on this bottle. I think it's just fantastic. Let me take a vape. Uh, what are we doing next? Someone remind me what we're doing next. It's time for retro vaping. All right, yeehaw. Well, let's do some retro vaping. So, what I have in my hand is something that everybody should be familiar with. It's a it's a cartomizer. And that's not what this retro vaping is about, but I just like I just like digging out old cartomizers and using them cuz I was such a huge fan of cartomizers. Like I just I loved them. I worshiped them. They were the lifeblood of my vaping life. I put them in tanks, I used them alone. I'm going to plug this onto the ohm meter and check the resistance of it. 1.8 ohms. That Oh, that's just going to be perfect for for the mod I have to retro vape. So the mod I have to retro vape, n- no one is going to see this and go, oh yeah, <laughs> I remember that. This is the tech mod. <laughs> and it's called the tech mod because it was made from a Techion external battery pack. So there's dual 18650s in here and there's a horn button on the back and it does 5 volts charges via USB and it has a 5 volt USB out and up here where the 510 was used to be a light so there's a switch set right here and if you turned it to the top that was the flashlight and if you turned it in the middle that was on and then the bottom was off but now that it's a mod someone modded this into a mod from a external battery pack you just flip it up all the way and it's on and you're good to vape. This was a regulated five volt vape. In fact, it's even got the signature tech mod crack. Every person that had a tech mod had a crack. Do you see this crack that runs down the center of it? It's just something that happened. Everybody, literally everybody I had ever met or talked to, Brandon, my buddy Scruff from Reno, who helps me do VaporCon West, he had one, same crack, same crack right down the middle. It was just, that was the weak point of this particular mod. And history lesson for those of you who may have just recently joined me, the reason we call them mods is because they were modded from other things. This used to be a battery pack, and it is now a mod. It happened to be very, very comfortable. It's got that sort of kidney bean shape. It was very comfortable to hold in your hand, very comfortable to hit with your thumb. I loved, I freaking worshiped this mod. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna fill up this cartomizer and I'm gonna use, this is a very old bottle of Mission to Mars and I'm only using it because it's a 50-50 and it's six milligram. I'm using the condom fill method technique where you fill up part of a cardo condom and you slide the cartomizer in and you squish all that juice right up into your cartomizer just like that oh and you see it come out the top and you get all the polyfill in there there was polyester filling inside these cartomizers you get that all nice and wet all nice and wet and you would do this a, you know you would do this a couple of times so let me get this cartomizer all primed and ready before we vape it So I'm not going to bother putting a drip tip on here. I'm just going to attach it and vape it like I used to do with a cartomizer. Look at that. This was a vape. This was my vape. I took this meet. I took this to the Northern California vapors meet. I took this to uh, vape fest in Philadelphia. I took 
this to Vape Fest in Philadelphia. What? The tech mod. Why did I do that? I'm going to link in the description to my original tech mod video, but it's basically me just raving about it. I'm like, it's five volts. It's awesome. It's so comfortable. And at that time, I don't think I knew that it was modded from something. I thought this was like an original mod design, which, you know what? Even if it was a, an original mod design, it still looks cool. I think it looks cool. It's not firing. Oh, it's not on. Oh, give me a heart attack, tech mod. Oh, it's firing. It's firing, baby. Five volts, um, six milligram, Mission to Mars. This is a raspberry coffee flavor. I'm excited. I'm excited to vape this. I have literally not vaped this tech mod in probably four years, maybe three years. Yeah, baby. God, that flavor. That flavor just brings me back so far. That flavor brings me back. We debuted this flavor at the first or at the third vape bash. And that was, I remember this flavor because it's the flavor I was vaping when I first met Ruby. I was vaping this flavor, and that's what this flavor reminds me of is when I first met Ruby. And I know, whatever, oh, that's going to upset people, and I'm calling Ruby Roo Schmoopy from now on. This is when that, that flavor, this flavor reminds me of that uh, vape bash event. I was vaping out of an RDA, the, the Castle RDA, out of the Jolit 26650 DNA 40 box. Clouds, clouds, bro, clouds. Dude, the cardamizer is such a great mouth to lung vape. Oh, it's so great. I'm just going to sit here and retro vape for a second. Please forgive me. We'll just we'll we'll sit here and I'll throw a dubstep over my retro vaping. Yeah. used to be such a science to filling these up you would drip a couple drops watch it soak in drip a couple drops watch it soak in because you didn't want to flood it you didn't want to flood it and get juice in your mouth but you definitely definitely did not want to dry hit in a cardamizer getting a dry hit in a cardamizer was like getting a burnt hit on a you know a, a clearomizer like it would get burnt and then you would never get rid of that burnt flavor ever again your cardamizer was done i used to buy these like five packs like 10 at a time because i just loved the cardamizer so much this is a 1 1.7 1 1.8 ohm cardamizer at a regulated five volts this is proud this could be the most nostalgic i've ever felt with a retro vaping it's good it's good, man. Like I said in my last retro vaping, I keep my retro vapes around for at least another three or four days. In fact, I bet this raspberry coffee and this Bourbon County coffee stout are going to taste just great together. Mm-hmm. That's actually not too bad. <sighs> not too bad at all, but yeah. That's what I got. That's what I got for retro vaping. Quick little retro vaping segment. Tech mod. No one sells these anymore. Um, if there's any modders out there who want to maybe look into this housing and bring it back for nostalgic reasons, the Techion tech mod, uh, make it like a dual parallel unregulated box or even just a... I don't know, DNA 200 or something. It's cool. It was fun. Like I said, this was this was my favorite mod for a very, very long time. I used it all the time. I used to use it with a gooseneck and a cardo tank, and it looked I looked like an idiot, but it was just such a good vape that I didn't uh, I didn't care. And I can hear my batteries rattling in here now, which is weird. But uh, but yeah, tech mod, dude. Let's wrap up this retro vaping. Um, what I want to do right now before we wrap things up. That's right. Favorite comment of the week.
All right, so I actually have two comments. That I apologize. I apologize right now because I noticed throughout this vlog, I keep looking over here at the screen just to make sure that I'm still in frame, that I'm still in focus. I'm going to get out of that habit the longer that I use this camera. But I actually have two, count them, one, two comments of the week. So this was left on that Beast 200 watt device. And it's not even that funny. I just laughed <laughs> so hard when I read it. But a guy, uh, a guy named Pooh Face, sure, uh, commented on that video on that Beast Box 200 watt box mod video, and he said, "Do that thing's weak." <laughs> what? Do that thing's weak. So he said, "Do that thing's weak." So that it's possessive. The S, the apostrophe S is possessive so things oh god there's so many in this it's ridiculous do that things weak <laughs> that oh my god that just killed me uh second favorite comment of the week uh unfortunately i had to say goodbye to somebody this week my favorite thing my favorite thing in life is when uh when someone tells me that they're unsubscribing when they're like bro you're a jerk. I'm unsubscribing. Or, dude, you got that battery info wrong. I'm unsubscribing. Or, hey, you're too full of yourself and you think you're a celebrity now. I'm unsubscribing. That's my favorite thing. When people unsubscribe, but then they have, they feel this need to tell me why they're unsubscribing. Mr. Ronald Owens wrote and said, yeah, unsubscribed. You done turned into a snowflake. What? What does that even mean? Yeah, unsubscribed, you done turn into a snowflake. <laughs> now, I don't know if he means like a literal snowflake, like I resemble that of falling snow from the sky, or if snowflake is some sort of derogatory term that I shouldn't be using, like it means like a white guy that got tattooed and wears a trucker hat now. Like if that's if that's what a snowflake is, um, I don't know. But he said, "Yeah, unsubscribed. You done turned into a snowflake." Thank you, Ronald. Thank you, Ronald, for not only unsubscribing because I have a feeling you were a dick anyway. But thank you for unsubscribing and at least telling me why you unsubscribed. One hundred percent of the population out there, they can unsubscribe and they don't feel the need to tell me why they unsubscribe. But you. You thought I turned into a snowflake, <laughs> so you unsubscribe. So, yeah, that's great. That's what I got. So that's what I got for the vlog today, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try to keep doing this uh, sort of nighttime vlog. I like it. It's like grim green, after hours, after dark. I do want to give a shout-out to the Michigan Vape Society. Can you see it? For the sweet uh, for the sweet t-shirt. They contacted me on Instagram and sent me this t-shirt. Very, very cool t-shirt. So shout out to you, Michigan Vape Society. Very, very cool of you to send me this t-shirt. But we've got a lot of cool stuff uh, coming up, as we always do. A lot of mech mods, boxes, RDAs, RTAs, because that's what vaping is. Uh, specifics, sure. VT200 review is coming up soon, uh, as well as the... Hooligan box mod is coming up soon. There's going to be a couple DNA 200 devices coming up soon. I'm going to do that sub tank sort of lineup of stuff and do a full review of like six different sub tanks at the same time. Um, but that's what I got. We're going to be in Phoenix, Arizona this weekend. In fact, as you're watching this, I will be driving to Phoenix, Arizona. So comments and replies, things like that, uh, will probably have a huge delay. I probably won't even be able to see any of those emails comments anything until uh early next week when we get back but yeah that's what i got thank you so much everybody for watching for tuning into the vlog you're my favorite people on earth what am i gonna grab what am i gonna grab what am i gonna grab i don't even know who's taking bets what am i gonna grab how about this how about the cyclone tank with yig that's what i got for today i'm gonna sit here tonight pardon me i'm gonna burp i'm gonna enjoy my beer i'm gonna en Enjoy my yig, and I'm going to hiccup, and I just look like a raging alcoholic. Thank you so much for watching, everybody, and as always, yes, let's keep on vaping.